Hey guys, this is Will Doggett, uh, worship leader from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Ableton Live certified trainer. Uh, we're here again, just like the last video I shot for you guys and showed you. I uh, just want to show you what we're doing with Ableton Live and how we're using it at Ocean's Edge School Worship for uh, the show. Um, every year we do two big events, uh, halfway through the year, not so silent at night, which is the last video you guys uh, saw me talking through this. And this one's for the show, uh, and the show is like an in-year event about um, 16 songs we do, some that are worship, some that are originals, uh, but it's a really big production. And so we always run into this issue of uh, staffing and having enough people to run lights and lyrics and background videos and Ableton stuff. And so what we've been able to do is use Ableton Live to function basically as our master control. So really all we need to run the entire production as far as lights, uh, lyrics, backgrounds, clicks and loops go is one person here on the computer. So essentially, uh, I'll take you through our setup, tell you a little bit about what happened. Is we start with each of these songs individually in an Ableton Live set. Uh, we have clicks, we have loops, we try to get the original MP3 in there. Um, I like to think of it as a reference MP3, a reference track, which helps when we add lyrics after the fact. But we start with all these songs individually, and then we sit down and took about a week to program the lights for the show. Um, we did a lot of that in this room, but we actually used a light virtualizer software. So you're able to see that on a laptop without having to turn all the lights on and, and do that. So we were actually in here programming lights for the show while other people were working in the theater. Um, but we did that, and as we would program lights, we would add in MIDI cues so that those MIDI cues would trigger the lights. And I'll talk about how I do that here in a second. Uh, and then once we did all the, the light cues for things, we would add in lyric cues that would uh, MIDI notes that would trigger things in ProPresenter. And then once we had all that together, we put it all together in this Ableton Live set. Uh, and again, this is really actually functioning as our master control. So all uh, a volunteer needs to know how to do in this scenario is click a button for whatever song or whatever uh, thing that they're going to and thing that's happening. <laughs> and it's going to happen automatically. It's going to set the lights, lyrics, background videos. Uh, so for instance, let me show you one of these songs. Uh, this is a song uh, called um, Heaven. And we have kind of these two songs. It starts with a few hits. But this one actually starts, we have a video that's about three minutes long. Right out of that video, we go into the guitar player playing by himself. And so what we have happen is, at the end of that video, it's automatically timed to where it's going to clear out the video in Pro Presenter. And then it's going to pull up the lighting look for the guitar player to start. So what's neat about this is when I click this cue and press spacebar, you'll see the lights in the theater slide over and highlight kind of where he is. So, all I have to do is click spacebar. In our scenario, the video would just say, and the light would move into place. He does his thing, which isn't to a click. Uh, it's kind of free form. And then as soon as we're ready, and I'll turn up our mixer here so we can get it The band hears click, and then they have some hits that they hit on. So we have the light sequence so that they hit exactly when the band's going to hit. You can see the background videos that we have that are pulled up to match the look and feel of the song. Uh, then the band kicks in and do a little drum thing, and the lights move out. So the beauty of this, though, is all this stuff happens with the click of one button. Uh, we can kind of step away, and once Ableton's running things, it's going to run things, and it's going to change light looks based on where we are in the song. I'll take you a little further into the song, kind of the B section here. Um, and you'll see in just a second, on the sides, the lights are going to fade up where the choir starts singing. And then... lights come out. So that was really easy for us because we knew exactly where the choir is going to sing. So it's really easy for us to lay in cues and time it out to where right when the choir needs to be there, those lights come out. Uh, and when they don't, they don't uh, show up. The other cool thing that's uh, the way this works, I'll show you guys a few other scenarios and then we'll uh, talk about how we did this. We take you to another song. Um, this one, we wanted to sync the front lights with uh, what the piano player was playing. So I'm going to clear all this out, and this is kind of an automatic transition from one song to the next. So again, the band hears the click in their ears. And then we set kind of our initial lighting look for this. We have a look behind the band on stage. And then we have the lights come up that match the piano line perfectly. Uh, again, the timing is super easy. It's just a MIDI clip. Drop it in, and you do it once, and it's set. Um, and it just, again, works really, really well, really easily. So I want to take you through one other thing that was really great for us for this, is um, we actually have two computers, I'll take you through this in a second, but we have a computer for our center screen, 
uh, that's doing some motion backgrounds and some logos and some different looks. And then we have a computer for lyrics. Both of these guys are running ProPresenter. We're controlling them with the mini module uh, that you can purchase for ProPresenter. That's really great. Um, but what this allowed us to do is we have two ProPresenter computers. We have Ableton computer. We have lights. It's a lot to manage. But again, one person uh, can run the entire show. So if I go to the, like the beginning of my set here, I have a clear command, which is going to clear all my uh, ProPresenter looks, going to clear my lights out. And then we have an intro look that's some intro slides. When I click that, that those slides come up. I have another one for a, a portion of the show where um, our director of our school is talking about how we use Wham City Lights, which is a, a lighting app. And so when I click that, it brings up the video on the side, the logo on the center. Um, and again, if I want to clear all that, I can clear it really easily. The other cool thing that we're using Ableton for in this scenario is for all our pre-show stuff. So if you look kind of at the beginning part of this set, you'll see a, a bunch of locators here, you'll see a bunch of MIDI clips. What we needed to do is we needed a slideshow to go on the side of the screens. Uh, we needed pre-show music to play. We needed videos like every uh, couple minutes. We had some videos with audio that we wanted to drop in. Um, but the pre-show music was all songs from the new CD we did. So we have slides that match up that say, hey, the song you're currently listening to um, is Hallelujah, or the song you're currently listening to is Oddity, which is off the new album. So we needed that slide to correspond with the music, and when the music wasn't playing, we needed the video to play. Uh, well, last year we ran into the issue of you know the sound guy having to run back up to the soundboard, adjust for levels, having two different you know uh, levels and faders he has to mess with. This year we made it really easy on the sound guy. So um, the entire pre-show thing is programmed in Ableton. It's about 30 minutes worth of stuff, um, and you can see this crank in. It's going to play a promo video at the beginning there, and um, if we had three minutes, we'd sit and watch the whole thing. But I'm going to jump to the end here. And what happens is it's going to clear that video out. You can see all these MIDI cues here. And then from there, it's going to start an audio track off the same computer. You can see our slide that corresponds with the song. Uh, then it's going to cycle through the slideshow. So again, that allows us to do all this uh, beforehand. Everything is synced up. Um, and everything's happening essentially exactly like we want it to, which is really, really great. Um, and then again, once I get to the end here, when we're ready, uh, with a click of a button, don't even have to touch the propers in your computers. I can clear all those looks and bring kind of our intro look back up. So that's basically what we're doing for the show. Uh, let me take you through kind of how we're doing this. Um, and a lot of people look at this and I get a lot of emails from people saying, hey, how do we do this? We're a small church. I'm like the only guy on staff that's a worship guy. There's no way I can figure this out. Um, it's incredibly, incredibly simple. So let me take you through all the elements. First thing we have here is our Ableton Live computer. It's a Mac Pro. Um, it's not a Mac Pro because of the stuff we're doing. It's not a Mac Pro because you have to have a Mac Pro. Uh, it's a Mac Pro because that's our studio computer. And come time for the show, we're all using our other computers for service and for everything. So this one's available. It's usable. We were able to bring it over here. So that's why we're doing this. Uh, for clicks and loops, for sounds, it's a little hard to see because it's dark under here. But we're using a Focusrite Sapphire interface. It's an 8 out interface. Uh, it's really great when you're doing a show like this because it allows us to have discrete outputs for uh, different things. We're going out of there with a, a kind of basic quarter inch snake to, I believe, six DIs. We have click, loop, synth, choir, left and right, and percussion. Uh, we pre-track a lot of the choir stuff because it's hard to get a really good choir sound when you have a full rock band, um, you know, guitars, loud drums. So this allows us to kind of bleed in, uh, blend in the what we tracked with what's happening live. So that's our Ableton computer. Um, out of this, the main thing you probably need to know is we're running Ethernet out of this. You see the line taped down here. Uh, back to an Airport Extreme router. Again, don't let the extreme scare you. Uh, any router that you can run into and run out of uh, works for this. But basically we're running Ethernet to the router. Uh, and this is basically a network that we've set up. It's not connected to the internet. But it allows us to network our Ableton computer and both of our ProPresenter computers together. So out of this, let's talk about the ProPresenter computers and we'll go to the lighting console here in a second. Um, out of this we go to uh, our ProPresenter computer from Lyrics. We're using the uh, multi-screen module uh, that you can get with ProPresenter. Using the Matrox triple head to go. Um, that basically just allows us to split to three signals. We're only using uh, outputs one and I believe three to go to our side screens. 
um, that's taking the same signal and splitting it to our side screen so we can do lyrics. Uh, we're doing all our videos on the side there. Um, but that allows us to have that and have separate control over what happens in the center and what happens on the sides. Uh, so we've networked that in via Ethernet. And again, the way we're connecting these, I'll just go ahead and show you guys. There's this great feature built into every Mac computer called Audio MIDI Setup. It allows us to create a network MIDI connection, which can either be wired or wireless. In this case, we're doing wired. We've done wireless before, had no issues, until uh, a thousand people connect to your router and bump you off and lose connection. Besides that, it's worked well. Uh, so in this case, we're doing wired. And basically what happens is when all those computers are on the same network, you create a network mini session on the master computer, which is our Ableton computer. In the directory here, you'll see the name of that computer. You click connect, and uh, now you can send MIDI over Ethernet to another computer. So we have audio MIDI set up. Within ProPresenter, uh, there's an optional MIDI uh, module. I believe it's 100 bucks. It's really, really inexpensive. Um, that allows you to control basically the essential features of ProPresenter via MIDI commands. So you can go into MIDI setup, see all the different commands that you can use. If you haven't purchased this, you can demo it so you can mess with it and try it. Um, I have a video showing how to set that up in free cues that you can use so you don't have to make your MIDI cues. Uh, but all these different MIDI cues, uh, cues allow us to clear, bring up lyric slides, um, really, really neat. And actually, let me take you through a song so you can see how that happens on that computer. So I can go to a song that we have lyrics for here. Um, this is actually an original song. So I'm going to skip ahead to our verse here. You can see we pulled up our light books. And it's going to cycle through all our lyrics. Uh, again, that just took the click of uh, my mouse on the song. I step away. Um, all these mini cues are now being, again, sent via Ethernet to our Pro Presenter computer. You can see it's going to call up the slides depending on when we need it to, depending on what section it's in. Um, this allows us to basically program, create lyrics, program the lyrics into our Ableton set, do it once, and then we're done. We don't have to touch it again. It gives us the flexibility and ability to jump around, skip around to different sections. Uh, and again, it's linked up to our lights, linked up to our video, uh, so one person can Essentially the same thing that's happening over here is happening um, on this guy, on this computer. Uh, same thing, we're connected audio MIDI via Ethernet to our airport extreme. They're all on the same network. Uh, using the same exact MIDI module for ProPresenter on this computer. Um, and we send one MIDI command, and when that calls up the lyrics, it's also calling up the backgrounds so if we have a look for the song. Um, and again, it's worked really, really well. So that's the basic ProPresenter setup. And let me go ahead and clear this out. And then we'll talk about how we're doing the light. So, so again, I have a clear command, uh, and then I can go to kind of our intro look here. And that's all of one computer. I don't have to mess with the programs that we use. Uh, not a lot to manage, just one computer here. So for lights, uh, this is a, a little more complicated uh, setup, but in, again, incredibly, really, really simple. So we have a light cues track here. And let me take you to something where you can see it a little better. Uh, here's one, that first song I showed you that had the hits, and you can see Q19, we have it set to where uh, rhythmically it's going to hit exactly where we need it. We go through Q19 all the way to Q24. These are MIDI clips, and what's happening is these MIDI clips are getting set to sent to Bones MIDI Translator. It's a really, really cool app. Uh, I didn't get it at first. The first time I saw this, I thought, why would anyone need this? I don't like having in-between programs. But essentially what this is doing is it's translating our MIDI note to MIDI show control. And the reason we're doing that is the light board that we have uh, only receives MIDI show control. Now it can do SMPTE, you can do MIDI time code, um, but we need the ability to jump around and it's not really feasible or possible. Um, it doesn't work as well when you're doing SMPTE, when you're doing something very linearly. Even though this is an arrangement view and it looks linear, we still have the ability to jump around, repeat songs, repeat sections. Uh, there's been a few times where the band will get off click, all I have to do is solo our click, get them back on, unsolo click, and everything's going to follow, works really well. So what we're doing, because of the way this board works, and I, I get that question a lot too, is how do I control my lights? Uh, it's important to know what type of commands your board sees, whether it's MIDI show control, MIDI time code, MIDI notes, uh, SMPTE, um, and 
This particular one is MIDI show control. So we have a cue, MIDI cue that goes into Bones MIDI translator. You can see all our cues laid out here. And I'll just take you to, we're looking at Q19. So when I click this, you see my incoming thing. It says it's going to receive a note on channel 1, F-sharp 0, Blasi 19. When Bone sees that note, it's going to output this MIDI message. Now this maybe just looks like a bunch of numbers, which it is. But this, these are hexadecimal numbers that equal a command in MIDI show control. So essentially what's happening, when we go to Q19, when I send that MIDI cue, Bones is receiving it in the input. It's in translating that to MIDI show control, these numbers here. These numbers are then telling the light board, go to Q19. So let me show you uh, exactly what happens here. So we can stay on the light board. It says live Q1. Uh, you can see over here our Q list. I'm going to go over to Ableton, and I'm going to take us to the Q19. So I'm going to give us a little pre-roll here with the click. And Q19 is coming up. And you see it's going to take us right to Q19, jump ahead to two, uh, Q20 because of the way we're doing this. And in a second, uh, there's Q21, 22, we'll go to Q24 here in a second, which is our main look. And it's going to cycle through all those looks depending on where we are uh, in the song. So, again, this, this works really well for us uh, because our lighting guy, myself, and a few other people, we don't just do this. At the same time that this is happening, we have services happening. So uh, we pre-program, we do a lot on the front end. Then that gives us the ability to walk over and do service um, during this. And we have a student that sits and runs this during the show. So it's, it's great. It's a, lot of, uh, a little bit of work on the front end. Uh, the more we do it, the faster we get at it. But during the show, we just sit back and relax and text and tweet and drink monsters and coffee and uh, just have a good time. So it allows us to kind of relax and, uh, and it all just works flawlessly. So again, the great thing about this is depending on whether it's a video look, uh, depending on whether it's a song, uh, a speaking thing, no matter what's happening, it's all controlled from here. So you don't have to have your lighting person, your pro presenter person here, your pro presenter person here, your loops person here. You can have one person that gives them the ability to control all of that. Uh, our goal isn't to put the lighting guy or pro presenter guy out of a job. We still had to program lights. We still had to program lyrics. Uh, but it did give us the ability to pre-program on the front end and have a consistent uh, show that had high production and a high level of freedom. Because, again, the same way we can jump around in Ableton Live and everything synced to the click, all our lights, our lyrics, our videos are, uh, are still synced to the click in this scenario. In this stuff. So I uh, hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, and again, it's incredibly simple to do. It doesn't take a whole lot of money to do. You don't have to have a Mac Pro. You don't have to have an Airport Extreme. You can use a built-in wireless card on your, your Mac. You can create a wireless network. Um, you can take an Ethernet cable and run from one computer to the next. It doesn't take a whole lot of gear to do this. Uh, but it's a really, really easy way to have, again, high production with a high level of freedom. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. And uh, maybe we'll see you in a few more months with uh, the next uh, version of our setup. Have a good one.